I'm going to show you the top 15 tips and tricks in Planet Zoo to become a better builder. First up is learning to use objects in different ways. If I just select any object, for example here, the African column, this is meant to be a column, right? But let's see what we can turn it into. If I sink the column into the ground and then sink this into the column, we've got a low down light, haven't we? And that's just a very simple example. A really good example is this. Using the surface moss as water and dirt, we can see you're under the food troughs we've got it used as dirt and where our grid is we've got it used as water try to think outside the box use objects in different ways and not always the way it's intended to be used and number two you can create your own barriers you can pretty much use anything you want you do not have to use the in-game habitat barriers these we, we don't need to use these at all we're just going to use no barriers and then we're going to create our own now the design is totally up to you here's a couple i like what i've built and put on the steam workshop page you can place this around a habitat and then once you've got your habitat in place you can go back on barriers and just run a null barrier through it and your animals will not escape and your barriers because they're not actually in-game barriers will not degrade so you don't even need to maintain them you can also use rocks and foliage to create your barriers as long as your habitat is complete and you have run a null barrier all the way around the edge and run your no barrier all around the edge of your habitat where your own custom barriers are, your animals will stay in there and you've got a better looking habitat. This also goes for walls and I'll give you a live example now. I've got a normal plaster wall what's on the grid. Using on the grid is a much easier way to create your own custom walls. Now I can pretty much put whatever I want on there. So I'm gonna, let, let's get some wood, let's get some wood pieces. Uh, we're going to go with the conservation wood pieces. Let's type that in, find them up. Now I'm just going to layer this on, make sure you're on the grid. And you can just pretty much design any kind of wall you want. Once you have created your wall, just press and hold the left button on your mouse, drag a little box, let go, and then you can just duplicate it and you can just duplicate your custom wall and create custom buildings. Creating custom walls really brings inside habitats and hard shelters come to life like you can see in this habitat here. Up next, you might have guessed it is custom paths and this it works exactly the same as your custom walls. Put any material you want down in the construction menu. I do suggest using on the grid pieces. You can see me just using the, this concrete piece here. Now, once you've done this, all you have to do is click on your paths, make sure a line to grid is on, click on the grid what your path is on, and then just align it underneath like this. Then exit everything, click back on your custom path, press X and just lower it down just above your actual in-game path like that. And yes, your guests and your zookeepers and all your staff will still walk over these paths as long as there's an actual path underneath. As you can see, I'm walking over my custom paths here. We've just done custom walls, we've just done a custom path, so we might as well do custom roofs. And you guessed it, it works exactly the same. And this is a little thing what I like to do. I'm going to show you here how to get a thinner roof than the in-game roof. Sometimes it can be a little bit thick like that. Look how thick that roof is. So we're just going to go and we're going to, again, design is totally up to you. But what I like to do is go on the 4x4 plaster piece there and click on the menu on the bottom right. And we just want position snap on and just press it on like that and put it to the top like that now you have to hold control while in the same group and click on that one click on the top one and you can just start placing as easy as that and building your roof out and then what you want to do is just go around and you just want to delete the on the grid pieces underneath your custom roof like so just delete all them and it will leave you with your thinner roof because it's already merged together all you have to do is click on it press x and then you can lower it down and move it around exactly how you want it like so let's go back to pass for a minute and i'll show you how to make a perfect circular path 
Now, choose whichever length you want or thickness you want. The most important thing is at the bottom right-hand menu, you want to click Angle Snap and make sure it's on 50 degrees. And now you're going to place your first path. Once you place your first path, you're just going to place a second path next to it. Once you've done that, you want to move in with your mouse by 15 degrees. Just move it in once and just keep clicking. Once you get to the end, it might look a little bit weird like this. Just move it in again and click. And there you go, you've got a perfect circular path. You can make habitat out of this by adding your custom barriers, remember? Or you can even dig down so you've got a natural barrier and create a pond or something like that. But yeah, that's how you create a perfect circular path. All right, we've just done circle paths, so let's do circular buildings. Now, this can be a little bit tricky. The first thing you wanna do this is what I like to do anyway, is select this mud column. It's called mud column one. And this is kind of gonna act as, well, it's gonna bring the grid up and it's gonna act as kind of like a measuring tape, like a measuring tool to make sure we can get as close to the perfect circular building as we can. Very important, bottom right here, you wanna turn the grid size down to one. And there's two numbers you need to think about, and that's 7.5 and 15. Now, for a smaller circle, you're gonna go with 7.5. For a bigger, we're gonna go for 15. I'll show you the 15 one. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and place another mud column down. And we're gonna do the same again on the other side. Once you've done that, and you've done 15 meters on one side and 15 meters on the other side again design is totally up to you i'm just going to show you a very simple one with the plaster pieces and this is you need to make sure you're using the four by four meter and this is gonna what you be the principle of it is you use four by four meters on this scale of circular building if you want to do the seven point uh, five which i'll show you in a minute the smaller one you use the two meters so you want to go down here and make sure your position snap is on and you just want to hover over one of the mud columns like that and then press x press x again and rotate it around until it's pointing up like that click on it and you want to do exactly the same you guessed it on the other side like this now you want to delete these mud, mud columns so get rid of them so you've just got the center one now you're gonna exit and then you're gonna click on the building. You see everything's grouped together and it's all on the grid, isn't it? We're just gonna duplicate it. We're just gonna duplicate an advanced move. Press X again and we're just gonna rotate it 15 degrees. Again, make sure your angle snap is on. And you just keep placing it. You just keep rotating it and placing it over and over again like this until you get your perfect circular building. And if you follow the measurements correctly, it will all line up and you will have a perfect circular building. To do a smaller circle, we're gonna go out 7.5. Now, how do you get 7.5? Let me show you. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, click on it and then click on eight as well. And then do the same again on the other side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then place one on eight. Now we're gonna get the two by two plaster piece like this and we're just gonna hover over it again do the exact same thing but this time you're going to advance move it and you're going to put it in the center or as close to the center as you can actually get it of them two mud columns just like that then again we're going to delete these mud columns and now hopefully when we rotate it you'll see it lines up that's it it lines up and you do it exactly the same again until you get your circular building this same measurement of 7.5 actually it works for one meter as well so let's do the same and we'll move it in make sure it's in the middle do the same again on the other side make sure it is in the middle or as close to the middle as we can get it delete the outer mud columns and now this time if, if you if you go back and you realize that it's not on the same group just go on your multi-select tool click or drag and add selection and just drag it over and then merge scenery together like that then click on it and we're going to rotate it but this time you will see a gap but don't worry keep doing what i've told you to do like this and i'll show you how to fill these gaps in a second all you have to do is delete all these mud columns and i do suggest you do this for all of them as well you don't want a mud column 
well you don't want multiple mud columns in the center of your circular building do you so just keep left clicking and right clicking to delete them just keep going and then we want to merge all this together and then we're just going to duplicate an advanced move and all we're going to do is take angle snap off and we're just going to line it up best we can like that and then we're going to select everything and merge it together again and there you go you can move it about freely uh, is your circular building so that's how to do all sizes of the circular building here's a very quick easy one that not everybody knows if you want to change the color of your water and even add mist you can just fill any gap with normal like you normal water like you would normally do go on customize you can use natural water color or you can select any color you want you can literally pick from the color planet or there is some presets for you to go so you've got like azure and you've got crystal you've got tropical which is possibly my flavor i love to do tropical and just drop it down on this transparent say measure here to 1.2 you've got a nice tropical look also additionally to this you will see bubbles and mist and that's right you can literally add bubbles and mist to your water moving on to more advanced water techniques now and that is underwater viewing areas to create something like this it can be a little bit tricky but hopefully i'm about to help you out with it you want to heighten your terrain to whatever height you want keep in mind whatever height your terrain is is how high your water is going to be and your barriers and then you want to use the barriers and you want to use any of the glass barriers so let's go on glass barriers and all you want to do is just start placing your barriers like you you normally would any design you want i'm going to keep it very simple for demonstration purposes what you do need to do when you get to the terrain is just dig into the terrain like that and again on the other side like that now you're going to finish it off with no barriers so don't worry about that bit what you want to do though is raise the height of your glass barriers to whatever you want and then you're just going to add the water and hopefully when i click on it it should work like that there you go and that's the basics of how to create an underwater viewing area it's basically just a large fish tank isn't it you would have to create some kind of slope or edit this terrain before you put the water in so your animals can get in the water and at the back you want to carry on your barriers with null barriers around the outside of your habitat i'm going to quickly show you how i did this on this example of the habitat created you can see the slope is on there for the animals to get in they've got a slope on the back as well to get back to normal terrain level this is for pygmy hippos by the way and how cute are them and then my habitat barrier is down here so i'll just show you how it looks so the no barrier is going all the way around the actual terrain remember the terrain is under here i've just covered it covered it with plaster pieces and then we've got the glass barriers like i've just showed you going into the terrain Next up is how not to get stressed with the pathing system in Planet Zoo. On the basis of it, the Planet Zoo pathing system can come across quite basic, but when you try to build technical stuff, it does have its elements, especially when you get stupid corners and it just doesn't go how you want it to go. Also, the path cannot go too close to... Also, the path always ends up being obstructed for some reason. You just can't get it close to the barriers you want to get it close to or the water you want to get it close to. But believe it or not, this whole zoo is created by one grid. That's why all the paths on this zoo and the buildings are all on the same grid, which makes it very much easier. To do this, just click on the lighter grid on the bottom right and you can start making square edges like this and aligning everything to the grid so everything aligns in your zoo now you can make things not look like it's aligned by adding custom paths like you can see here and like you can see here where the plaza area is your guests will still walk on them like we've already discussed in the custom path section but yeah this is how you do it there's two different ways you can align everything on the grid like this so everything is aligned and nice and neat or you can just cover your paths and place paths underneath and not care what they look like i'll show you right now if i delete this custom path decking look that's what the path would look like if i just use paths but if i cover the paths and create our own paths it covers up all the mess is what i'm trying to say play about with on the grid and off the grid pathing and if you do make a mess just cover it up with your own paths here's a very quick one if you tend to see gaps in your zoo which you will do just cover them with planters 
It's as simple as that. It's just a very easy way to cover gaps in your zoos. If you do get tricky gaps to fill, just cover it with a load of rocks and a load of foliage. Rocks and foliage in this game are the key elements on gap filling in a zoo. Place whatever, place whatever facility you want on your ground level. It works for single and doubles. Just make sure you leave a gap in the path like this, either on the left or the right hand side of the facility, just so it looks like this. Then you're gonna collect, select your second facility that you want on the top in this case a trade center and you just want to hover over the top so it says select group blah 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 to add to you just want to left click yeah because we want to stack these now this is very important we need to make sure the door on the top is opposite to the door on the bottom so you can see the door on the top of this facility is pointing that way and the bottom facility door is pointing the opposite way and then you want to select your path and I'm going to select path, door, select a line to grid yet, just hover over the door and it'll snap like that. Let it snap and left click on your mouse to place. And then you want to click on a line to grid and you want to go out one, in one, just like that, okay? And then deselect from grid, okay? And then just hover over it and you'll see it'll snap to the path at the bottom and that's why we left that gap there. Now you can just do this up with whatever design you want, add, a, add it into a, so it looks like an actual building and you've got two staff facilities on top of each other what are both operational. They save space and it looks kind of cool. Next tip is grouping foliage to cover stuff, to cover areas, to cover large surface areas, rock faces, cliffs, whatever you want. Try grouping your foliage like this come up with your own designs this is a rock face this is a group of rocks and foliage and it's very simple all you want to do i do advise getting the four rocks they are part of the aquatic pack i love these four rocks i love the texture that's what i really love about it and you just want to start placing them however you want them do whatever design you wish you can do low down ones like this then you want to add some foliage into the mix you can add whatever foliage you you want um, you can have lavender you can have anything you want right we're just going to create a little set here this is like a little set isn't it um, let's add some kind of like tropical stuff we'll add some like low down bushes like this we'll have some bushes poking over the top like this and then we'll add a little tree at the back like so right and then you're going to go to the bottom right here where it says multi-select click on that and then you want to click on this um, second to the top one where it says click or drag to add to selection click on that and then you're just going to hold your left mouse button down and it'll create a box like this and just drag it over all the foliage you've just done and then click on merge scenery into group just here at the top right now that is a group now you can press duplicate and you can keep placing this down to cover large surface areas this really works well when you're trying to create those null natural barriers i'll show you an example with these two over here let me take you over here to this side of my zoo what i've created and you can see i've created this rock face here with those pieces and the same here with these rock face and foliage areas for the backing of the zoo right let's have a quick conversation about backstage areas and hard shelters like you can see here i think these are very important in zoos and it makes a zoo more realistic and come alive even more look at our adverts just chilling in the backstage area now the guests can't go into this area they can if you want them to it's just all it's up to you you can put guest paths or staff paths but i like to leave it to staffs to keep it more realistic and you in the backstage area you're going to find all these kind of stuff out like your shovels and stuff like this and this is where i kind of want to like promote the conservation pack to you the conservation pack is absolutely brilliant and it gives you all these elements it gives you all these backstage props from barrels buckets horse pipes all the stuff you're seeing now is in the conservation pack there's only 150 scenery items in the conservation pack but the one you get a brilliant for backstage areas and creating realistic elements like this in your habitats and in your zoos not only can you create inside not only can you create inside backstage areas you can create outside ones as well have a little think of what kind of items you would get in an actual zoo these are off the steam workshop page don't be afraid to use people's workshop items that's what they're there for including mine steam workshop link down in the description but yeah look at these little feeding stations here for the African wild dogs, how good are them? All fenced off area, create that backstage area, create that realism and watch your zoo 
come to life. Just a little side note, on my Steam Workshop page you will find this set of backstage props to put in your zoos, already built for you. And our final last tip to conclude this video is blueprints. For the PC we have the Steam Workshop page and for console you're going to get a workshop as well run by Frontier. So embrace what other people make and make your life easier when you build stuff not only is the stuff you can put in zoos on the steam workshop to full habitats but remember the stuff what can help you as well and i'm going to show you the most useful item well what i find the most useful item on the steam workshop page and that's this little fella the little archer now it's not an ornament it's not a statue but this is the exact same height of a guest an adult guest in your zoos now why does this help it helps you with scaling so much there's been times where i before i discovered this little fella were literally i've built habitat barriers too high and the guests can't see over them and everything just doesn't look realistic because it's not in proportion but you can just move this guy when building stuff wherever you want say i wanted to build this for example now you can see if I put him here, you can see it's at the perfect height for this barrier. You guests are going to be able to see in. Look as they can do there. And this is just a measurement tool, isn't it? Like the measurement tool with the mud column technique I showed you how to make circular buildings. This is the same. It's think of it as a tape measure you're going to put this around your zoos just like this as a tape measure to make sure your barriers are at the right height and your buildings don't look oversized and stupid. There's so many amazing creators out there, so don't be afraid to use other people's stuff, especially when it's going to save you time. For example, this swing set here, it's a blueprint. This font on this sign, it's a blueprint. And even this toilet set is a blueprint. Go on Steam Workshop, have a look what you can find and use the stuff. That's what it's there for, shirt and shirt alike. And with that tip 15 being done, that concludes this video i hope these 15 tips and tricks and building techniques what i've showed you today in this video is going to help you be a better builder if it did and you found anything interesting then please hit that like button and if you're new around here to my channel and you want to see other planet zoo stuff then you might as well subscribe my name's adam and i will catch you in the next planet zoo video